What time is it? My alarm hasn't even gone off yet. I thought I was going nuts. I said to Lisa, I can hear voices outside. As if somebody's standing next to the boat and talking. So I got up and had a little look around. And she said she could hear them too. And sure enough, when I looked out the window, there was a group of women standing by the boat. Standing by the boat, that's right. All having a chat. Having a conflab. They'd been out for their early morning swim at God knows what time in the morning. That's them all up there on the beach. Yet yeah, used lot. Well, they've gone ashore now, so it's gone a bit more peaceful and quiet, but I couldn't say hello to them when they were standing next to the boat because I was in my noddy. Yeah, they'd have all had a shock. That bunch there, they'd have had a right shock. Oh, well, I may as well go now. As I'm up, and so's the sun, and so's a little bit of wind. So earlier than planned, I'll set off, but that's probably got a great big Brucey bonus attached to it. A snap of new key. Really nice place. As you can see with the little fires all over the screen, I'm in a fire zone. That's a North Cardinal boy. Easy to see because they're both pointing up. Both the cones point north, so it's easy to see. The easiest one, I think, except south, which is two cones pointing down. Now, there wasn't a lot of wind at the moment, so I stuck the motor on for a little bit. And i just seen some dolphins at the bow. But by the time I got here, They've all disappeared. There's a cardinal boy coming up under the sail there. It's a nice easy one to remember once you've got this little thing locked in your head. Look at the shape of it. It's a west cardinal and the easy way to remember is the shape it makes when viewed from the side is a W. Lisa's just got out of bed because she's heard me say there's dolphins. And now she's got a camera down there, still in her PJs, wanting to get a pitch of the dolphins jumping. She does these 90 second videos and she puts them onto um, Instagram, I think. And if you want to have a look at any of them, I think you just look under this here. She often records pictures of the towns that we go into and things like that, stuff that I never bother about. I don't think you can get a decent picture of a dolphin when the water's got wind on it anyway. And we've got plenty of wind now and the motor's not on and we're crisping along. We've got ourselves a nice groove and the boat's very comfortable and she seems to be going very well indeed. And Lisa's washed and dressed now so she's joined the land of the living. Well we've changed our course to port a little bit because we've come out of the firing range. And we're going to run the line of the firing range all the way up to um, Abadaran, where we're going to anchor up. Don't you just love it when the sailing is this good? Because I know, I do. There's nothing better than a sailboat in a groove. There's only the slightest bump on the water, as you can see. But it is a slight. But we've got that magical figure of wind. And that's the red dotted line we're sailing up against. That red dotted line, that's with the border of the firing range. Let's see what we can see from the captain's seat. Blue sky, blue sky, blue sky, blue sea, blue sky. A slightly healed horizon and the sea crashing on by through the window. A swallow just parts the water and slips on by. Just seen a motorboat while doing a little bit of a, a rear camera clip there, creeping up on us. And he's actually quite close, a couple of hundred yards away. And he looks like he's having a nice little bounce in these waves. It's actually quite, quite weird to see it lumpy looking like that because on Swallow, the water seems perfectly smooth and flat. But looking at it from his perspective, it's not smooth and flat at all. But you just take a look at this. We're in a beautiful groove and Swallow's not even bouncing round. She is going through the water, the same water he's going through, exactly the same water, exactly the same time. It, she just seems to shift it out of her way rather than bouncing over any waves. I suppose there is a lot more comfort when you're in a good groove. Well, I'll go stand on the coach roof and I'll have a look to see what the bow looks like going through the water. Well, I suppose it is got a little bit of a bounce on it. Nothing much, nothing that would upset the apple cart and certainly nothing that make me spill my tea. But the cockpit, 
The cockpit's not bouncing at all. That hardly moves. And the water, well, they don't look that lumpy. Well, I suppose there must be a wave in order for me to crash through it. Crash. Crash. Yeah, there's definitely crashing going on at that bow. But she's just shifting them waves out the way. Here's a big expensive boat, I'm sure. And I'll bet you he's using some money's worth of fuel there as he ticks on by, bouncing along. As soon as the sea flattens up, though, I can see his throttle opening and a big zzzz and gone. I'm going to put that on. <laughs> oh, we're losing a couple of knots there. Down to 13 knots, but we've still got over 5 knots, so that's keeping me happy. I actually did you a nice 360 from here, but when I went to play it back, well, that's all I got. I must have cancelled the button accidentally with my big thumb. So one last bow rider shot, because we don't want you insufficiently supplied with them before I go back inside. All this excitement from just five knots, I don't know how she does it. Yeah, I'd expect to be seeing six or seven knots up there, but no, it's always five. Still on that red dotted line, though. It's really, really hot. Look at the blue in that sky. It's a really hot day today. But it's a lovely place to catch some rays. While slipping through the sea to your next destination. Wind's starting to get a little bit lighter now. We haven't got that far to go about 12 miles but we've managed to hang on to about just about five knots swallow doesn't feel as happy though she's not beating her way through the waves in that big groove that she had before she's just slipping along on this silky surface wind's getting really light now We've only got 10 miles to go though, so I'm sure we'll make it. We've still got a pace over the ground. Look at our course. That's where we started off and we had to run north all the way out of the firing range before we could put a, a northwest course in to get where we wanted to go. So we'd have been there by now if we could have just run a straight line. That's saying we never got hit by some kind of a scud or a missile. The water's fallen quite smooth now. Look at them storm clouds. They are packed everywhere over the land. There's been a lot of storm clouds around over the last couple of weeks since the pressure dropped down. And we've just tried to aim for wherever the least and hopefully get a sunny day. But every morning we seem to wake up, it's misty and grey. Still the air gets lighter, but we've only got seven and a half miles to go now over that ridge um, and we're under five knots now but we're four and a half ish so no fantastic speeds anymore no crashing through the waves anymore just creeping along totally silent that'll be our silent transom doing that keeping us silent 
I always think it's quite a rugged bit of headland this bit. We're not really any safe havens if it blows up from the south, other than to have to run round one of the corners. The corner ahead of us to run round is uh, the Clin Peninsula. But we're not there yet, so we can't run round anything. Still, cracking view when you look up. All that blue sky, windy spinning round. I think those sails are set fairly well. They've pulled beautifully all day. And that great big ball of sunshine, wow, that is a hot one, that is. At this rate, we've got a couple of hours to go, so... I think I'll go chill out. I like the bar, obviously. A couple of cushions and you can go to sleep here for an hour or two. No messing whatsoever. Leave Lisa on watch, I'm sure it's her turn. I love the sound of the water at the bar as well, while I'm here. That's one of the attractions. That blue bit on the screen there that the arrow's going into, that's Devil's Ridge. You'd avoid that if it was a windy day because it'd be a right bumpy set of water on top of it. But it's not that windy, we're not going that fast. So it'll only be a light little swell to us, I'm sure. Land looks so far off because it's misty. That's just what it makes it look distance wise, but the mist is just sea mist, I'm quite sure. The wind is really getting light now. It even makes four miles look a long, long way away. And the speed, oh, we're not going to wait there till we'll eat, so we'll eat here. Yeah, let's have a salad. It's not a Caesar salad, it's just a sea salad we're having. And it'll be easy to eat out because we're hardly healing, a couple of degrees at best. That's how little wind there is at the moment. Oh well, only two miles to go. Two miles to go, and then we're there. Lisa's put a bungee from there across to the main sheet there to keep the mainsail quiet and stop the sail going clap in the wind because it's going so light. When it fills, when the boat rocks, it would go clap. So she's got it so it goes spring instead. Oh well, little bit of ingenuity, I'm sure. I think I'll go back to bow. Yeah, it's funny this because you get little tingles on the bottom of your feet and the red hot in the sun and those little cool tingles are really nice. Happy bad to sound dead, Ed. And we're almost at a point where I could say we could just carry on sailing through at this rate if there were a bit of wind. But I think we'd just come to a dead stop about there because the tide's about to turn the other way. These islands are little and big in Esquilin. And the current travels the other way on the ebb. So it's flooding behind them right round the uh, bay as well, Abadaran Bay. For a couple of hours before it's ready to start flooding through the sound. So that's like a shortcut back there if you're coming from Abersoch. You wouldn't want to bump into one of them now, would you? Oh well, I'm sure they're easy enough to avoid. Here's the beach at Abadaran anyway. And some caravans. And there's a tiny little bit of village as well. Ideal waiting ground. Looking back on those two islands... You can see there's plenty of water in between them to come through there in the mainland. There's a lot of lobster pots to watch out for though. Lovely beach here, but never very busy. The end of the Clins quite a hard place to get to, I suppose. And that's the little town. We've been ashore before in a dinghy and I'm sure there was a chippy and a pub. And I'm sure they were both closed. So we just need to spot to anchor now. And then later on, Lisa's going to do us a... Um, a Ruby Murray, and it's later on, and there's our Ruby Murray. Au revoir.